Hello everybody, today I am here to do my July wrap up which has been a long time coming considering we're now 10 days into August but I've been incredibly busy and part of the reason I've been incredibly busy is because I'm actually moving out in two days hence why my bookcase currently looks like this and not the lovely cornucopia of literature that it normally is. Not that that's important in the long run because we all know that I am here today to talk about books. So I read quite a lot in July, but it feels like it was so long ago now that I actually had to go back onto Goodreads just to remind myself what I read. I think I did enjoy most things that I read, even if some of them just kind of slipped my mind. That's partly because I don't have them physically here with me. The first book that I read was The Girls by Emma Klein, which is one of the ones that I don't have on my person just now because it was a free reading copy from work and then when I finished I passed it on to one of my colleagues. Now I'd heard some quite mixed things about this. I'd heard some people say that they absolutely loved it and the plot was really intriguing and then I'd heard other people say that it was maybe a bit overwritten and that there was a lot of sort of flowery language to try and cover up the fact that there wasn't really much substance and other people said that the language was too simplistic and it didn't really gel with some of the more poetic bits. And there was just generally a wide array of criticism that I'd heard of this book. But I am really interested in creepy stuff. I love cults. Not like in my day-to-day -day life, but I like books about cults. So I decided to give it a go and I would say that I firmly fell into the enjoying it camp. I thought it was a really, really interesting story and also I really liked the way that um, Emma Klein built suspense throughout the novel. You knew that things were going wrong but because of this kind of sunny, flowery 1960s California setting, there was still kind of a gloss over all the like the horrible things that were going on so it kind of, all the, the nasty stuff emerged sort of gradually and it's not until the very end that really things take a major turn for the worse. I really liked that sort of suspense and how it contrasted with the setting. I thought it just worked really really well and as I say that kind of book is always going to interest me because it's just a subject that I find fascinating. So I gave that one four stars and I would actually be quite inclined to pick up Helter Skelter which is the true story of the Manson murders now that I've read it because I noticed there were a lot of similarities in the book and obviously that's what it's based on but I mean like really really tiny similarities that you think well could you not have just changed that a tiny bit like the fact that um, they're, they ride around in this disused school bus that they've gutted and decorated on the inside to be like a sort of like slouchy couchy incense burny kind of place and that's exactly what Charles Manson did as well and the fact that the guy in the girls is um, a sort of failed musician who can't get a record deal and that's why Charles Manson developed this cult as well. So there was a lot of similarities that I kind of thought well it would have been more interesting if she changed these bits slightly just to make it slightly less in your face. The next book that I read was a graphic novel and that was Fun and Home by Alison Bechdel which I bought as a treat for myself um, when I first started my job and again I enjoyed this one. It I think I gave it four stars, it might have been more like a three and a half because I don't really remember exactly why I enjoyed it, I just remember thinking it was a, a pleasant read. It might need a future reread just for me to remind myself why, why I enjoyed it, but on the whole it was pretty good and it's deserving of the praise that it gets. After that I read Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer, which I don't have just now because I packed it away having forgotten that I would need it for this video because it seems like ages ago that I read it, I forgot it was a July read so I just packed it away thinking oh I don't need it for my wrap up um, and turns out I do and it's now 60 miles away from me. I absolutely loved this book, this is my favourite book that I've read this year and you might have noticed but I did a full length video on it as well where I review it more in depth and also do an analysis because my favourite thing about this one was that there were so many layers and so many things to dig into and analyse and I just I couldn't resist filming something specifically for that because I had so many ideas about how things fitted together. I think it doesn't have quite as popular a reputation as Everything is Illuminated which is Jonathan Safran Foer's other novel but I actually think I preferred it. Everything is eliminated. There's still a lot of history and there's still a lot of layers but it didn't quite grab me in the same way that uh, Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close did. 
it just, I don't know, it was just one of those books that did it for me and I think if you like books that are about sort of family history, family drama, uh, there's quirky characters, you like interesting narrative styles, you like them all being brought together in this big sort of wonderful, squishy, heartbreaking novel about the effects of war and the effects of bombings and the effects of terrorism and the effects of losing a parent. It's just, ah, I can't get my head around how much I adored this book. I got tickets to see him at the book festival and I am so excited to hear what he has to say because I just think if that's the way that he writes he must be a really really interesting guy. After that I read Glaciers by Alexis M Smith which I picked up based on a recommendation I saw on Kelly's channel over at What Kelly Reads and I liked it but I didn't love it. I kind of had a theory that I would love it because it sounds like it's got lots of sort of wee elements that I would like, you know, it's about a librarian, she loves vintage clothing, it tells sort of family background stories about like this crisp cold upbringing in Alaska and she's learning all about the glaciers when she's a kid and reflecting on it in her day-to-day -day life now that she's an adult. It just takes place over the course of one day and I usually quite like novels like that because when it's a decent amount of pages, which I mean this isn't really long and it's quite small on the page, there's a lot of like, there's a big margin, but it's still enough that I thought it would be a lot of detail to describe one day in the life of this woman. I just, I didn't really, I didn't love it as much as I thought I would. I think it's because with it taking place over such a short period of time, there wasn't an awful lot of space to develop the plot that much, it was more of an extended vignette and a lot of the time that works for me, sometimes it doesn't and this is one that while I thought it was very pretty, I, I, I just thought it was okay. The next I read is another one that I don't have with me because I got proof of it at work and then I passed it back on and I think actually Taylor over at Leatherbound read it straight after me and this one is Walking the Lights by Deborah Andrews which is the debut novel of I think she's a Glasgow based author and again it was just alright, it was an interesting distraction, it was fun at times but it was nothing to write home about. Basically it tells the story of this young woman who has just graduated from acting school in the late 90s living in Glasgow and her whole life is kind of plagued by these abusive relationships. She's got this kind of layabout boyfriend, an abusive stepfather and she's really struggling to find a job because she doesn't want to commit herself to anything full time because she'll lose out on her acting. She finds solace in drink and drugs and excessive spending and blah blah blah, all that kind of stuff, the usual vices that you find in that kind of book. I didn't really find much in it that I could connect with. The, the blurb said that it was very emotional and heartbreaking and there was going to be this big horrific event that would change everything and would ruin you and I spent most of the book like, this is fine, they're just plodding along, when's this, gonna, this big thing gonna happen? And then it's actually not that exciting. I mean it's interesting, it provides an interesting plot point but the character's reaction to it is I felt it was over the top and it didn't feel like a dramatic turning point to me, it just felt like really really labouring the point because especially this sort of big event which I won't reveal, it does involve some quite heavy drugs usage and it just kind of felt also a little bit preachy like you know don't do this because this horrible thing will happen and I just, I don't know, I didn't love it, I just thought it was an okay distraction but it's not necessarily one that I would rave about to other people or recommend too highly. I'd like to point out as well that it's actually been published now because I saw it on the shop floor yesterday. So it's published by Freight and is available to pick up wherever books are sold. The next book I read was my poetry collection of the month because as I've mentioned before I always try and read at least one poetry collection each month and this one was The Hard Word Box by Sarah Hesketh and its subtitle is A Poet's Exploration of Dementia and Ageing. Now I thought this one would be really really interesting because my family is very affected by dementia as well, my, my gran has very advanced dementia and the way that it affects my parents and our relationships and everything is a very very prominent factor in my life so I thought this would sort of really get into my heart but 
while it was upsetting and I found it quite difficult at times, I don't know, there was just something about it that I didn't really love. It was, yeah, I thought it was interesting and it was sad and it was challenging for me to read, but it wasn't really worth the pain, I would say, to be honest. There weren't really many moments which absolutely grabbed me and made all the heartache worth it. So I think I gave this one three stars as well because it was good enough and I liked what the poet was trying to do. She um, commuted from London to Preston to visit this uh, care home for, I can't remember how long it was, I think it was like 10 months or something. And she interviewed loads of the residents and made wrote poems based on their experiences and also she incorporates quite a lot of um, interviews in here like there are long bits which are interviews with the residents but yeah it just it didn't blow me away and I really thought it would because it's such a personal subject matter. I then lightened my mood by reading another graphic novel and that is In Real Life by Cory Doctorow and Jen Wang and this one, I'd actually forgotten that I wanted to read it until I was browsing through my TBR and was like, oh, actually, that one sounds pretty good. I'd completely forgotten the plot of that. So basically, it tells the story of this teenage girl who joins a massive multiplayer online role-playing game, or MMORPG for short, not that it's very short. She joins this online guild of powerful warrior women gamer types who basically are out to avenge people who are called gold ha harvesters who harvest lots of gold in the game and then use it to buy expensive items and sell them for real money. Her purpose in the game is to hunt down these people and get them kicked off the game. But then she sort of forms a bond with one of them and discovers the whole reason why he and all his uh, co-workers are doing this and it's really really heartbreaking and it's just a story of two halves about this sort of very privileged American girl or I think maybe she's Canadian actually um, playing this game and seemingly taking the moral high ground but then there's all this kind of there's a bit of discrepancy over what she's doing is actually right or what they're doing is right and I just thought it was really, really interesting to see her development as she learns about other cultures and why it's necessary for them to take up something that she had judged as morally wrong before. Art is very, very nice. It's very kind of computer gamey and just quite cute. And also I like the fact that the protagonist was overweight and no, no drama was made of it at all. It's like basically not touched on. She's just drawn that way. And I was like, yeah, that's really cool. But other than that, it was... Again, it was alright. It didn't wow me, but it was good enough. So it's not really one I think I'll be returning to, but it was a nice, pleasant distraction for one evening. My second last book that I read in July was my very first Jane Austen, Can You Believe It? Because I felt that I really needed to read some, considering I'm a bookseller and I should probably know classic literature a bit better. So I picked up Northanger Abbey and I got this one when I was in Bath in June because I thought, well, when you're in Bath, you have to get some Jane Austen. And I feel like I really, really liked this one, but I feel like it's not necessarily the best representation of Jane Austen's style as a whole. And that's what a lot of reviews that I read said as well. They were like, it's okay to like it, but don't get too comfortable with that style because the rest of Jane Austen's books are nothing like it. Like this is a very sort of frivolous story um, it's not too romantic, there's not much drama, it's just mainly about this girl who has a crazy imagination and how that impacts on her relationships with her friends, with her family, uh, with these men that she fancies and yeah, I just, it's a really really fun story and I did enjoy it but I do need to read more Austen now to compare it and obviously I should really start with Pride and Prejudice but if you have any other suggestions on other very accessible Austen novels, then I will happily take them because she's an author that, from this, I, I like her style of writing. I just want to see how it sort of works when she uses it in a more dramatic, romance, plot-driven way. And finally, I read a short story collection based on my Try a Story tag that I did, and I read Don't Try This at Home by Angela Redman. I had a few favourite stories in this collection. One of them was the title story, Don't Try This At Home, which I read for the Try Story tag and is about a woman who cuts her boyfriend in half with a shovel and then 
but she isn't satisfied with having two boyfriends so she keeps chopping them up and chopping them up until they're out of control and all leading independent lives. So there were also a couple of other stories that I really liked. One of them was called Boys Like Dolls and that was the last story in the collection and it's about a young boy who is obsessed with his G.I. Joe doll and it talks to him and tells him things to do and basically I just thought it was a really really interesting subversion of the whole like girls being controlled by their fashion dolls kind of trope. The other one that I liked was called Everywhere You Don't Want To Be and this one is about a woman who is just walking down the street one day when she sees a beggar who looks exactly like her and then discovers that it is her older self and she comes into conflict with this woman and they have a lot of disagreements. It's, it's slightly disturbing but it was very interesting at the same time because I think it taps into something inside all of us that makes us question what we will be like in 20 years time. So I just thought it was really interesting to see her confront that identity crisis. I think I gave this collection four stars because it was one that I really really enjoyed and like many other booktubers I would highly recommend it. Anyway that sums up my July wrap up. I also bought a lot of books in July which I have now all packed away so I can't do a haul video but I have some very exciting things lined up to read in August and September so hopefully I'll get to some of them soon and you will see them in my next wrap up. Let me know what you've been reading or if you have any recommendations for me in the comments down below and I will see you soon. Bye!